Last time in video 7, we solved the electron z-axis wave equation to give the z-axis wave function and energy as a function of the Deuteron separation distance. We did this by carefully defining the Coulomb potential through the Deuteron nuclei and also making relativistic mass adjustments for the electron in and near the nuclei. We can combine the electron z-axis energy as a function of separation with the deuteron repulsion energy to give a pseudo-potential for the two deuterons. This is completely analogous to the molecular hydrogen analysis. This slide shows the electron energy versus separation that we found last time. And the next slide, we add the repulsion energy to give the familiar pseudo-potential for the two deuterons. Now we are ready to solve the deuteron reduced mass wave equation. We will not deal with the angular momentum state, so the angular wave functions will be the familiar constants. The wave equation can be written as shown and easily solved by using the same standard shooting technique used for the electron. The ground state, or n equal 1 wave function, is shown here, and the energy is about minus 16 keV. The next graph shows the n equals 2 wave function, and it has an energy of about minus 14 keV. And the following graph shows the n equals 3 wave function with an energy of about minus 12 keV. I don't want to dwell on these states as they are not relevant. The next slide shows the n equals 35 wave function with an energy of about minus 17 electron volts. This is the highest energy state available. Note that the wave function is not trivial as the separation of the deuterons approach zero. We will eventually find that this is the only stable state between the electron and deuterons. Later, in order to completely define the electron state, we will require the most probable deuteron separation as shown here. Just for completeness, we show the deuteron energy versus the principal quantum number and in the next slide, the energy versus the most probable deuteron separation. Recall that from the path integral equation, we need a time interval for the integration of the Lagrangian over time. Since we are trying to describe the electron over a complete deuteron orbit, the deuteron orbiting time is required. We can calculate the deuteron orbiting time given the most probable separation and the principal quantum number. This graph shows the orbiting time as a function of principal quantum number calculated for the most probable deuteron separation. Next time, we will solve for the x and y electron wave functions from the path integral using Feynman's harmonic oscillator analysis.